Hello everyone, welcome to 3dDesignAcademy.com. In this lesson, we will continue with part seven of constructing the car project. Okay, so now we have established the roof, I think, and the side glass. I think I'm gonna move to the rear and try to establish the rear glass. So uh, for this one, I think I'm going to be using a little bit different technique. So uh, for the top, we used a skin tool, but for this one, I think I might have to use a square or a rail. I think I might use the rail. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm just gonna establish a curve from here to here, just roughly. And I'm just gonna do a symmetry like this. And I'm just going to move, uh, center the pivot. And what I'm going to do is with a three degree curve, I'm going to try to mimic this curve, uh, this, uh, this drawing right here. So I'm just going to move it like this. Move the pivot here and just move it a little bit more rearward like that. Like this, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of acceleration towards the outboard side. Like that. Um, I think that's pretty good. Might have to move this CV a little bit more inboard. Now, one of the things that you can, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now, one of the things that you can do is right now, if you want, uh, if you like the where this uh, line is established, you can just move the pivot. So right now, mine's a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it a little bit weird, rearward, and I can just use a non proportional scale, Control Shift or Middle Mouse button, like this, and you can just use the Middle Mouse button to change the shape like this. So what this does is, if you um, you can change the curvature of the curve without changing the center point. Because the problem is if you move, keep moving the CV right here like this, that's gonna, you, you have to shift it back to the center and make sure that it's lined up nicely here and have to establish this point here. Uh, you don't have to do that. With this, you just, uh, you just, all you have to do is just no proportional scale, make sure the pivot is at the curve and you can just change the curvature as you wish. Okay, so right now I'm thinking that because there's a quite a bit of acceleration towards here, I think I might have to use a, another surface to establish that. So I think I'm just gonna stop here. Now, uh, right now the curve is located at the bottom, so I might need to bring that up. So I'm just gonna grab it from the top and just move it up like this. Okay, look at it from the rear view. Now I don't need this surface right now, so I'm just gonna say object uh, display invisible. And it looks like it's pretty flat here. So I think that's good. And next I'm going to get a curve like this and change it to degree two. And give it a little bit of crown. Okay, so it looks like the side view is a little bit different from the top view. So I think I'm just gonna say somewhere in the midpoint. So maybe something like this. Drag it just a little bit behind. Now it's a little bit off, uh, but I think that's okay. So I'm just gonna establish like this. I think it's uh, due to the placement of the canvas itself, but uh, we can just, I mean, it's, I think it's close enough. So you don't, I don't think you have to like worry too much about the placement. Okay, so I'm just gonna establish the curve like this, make sure that I mimic this drawing right here. And okay, so I'm just gonna use a rail. So this time one and one, and I'm gonna use parallel. And I don't, uh, I think I probably explained this uh, to you before, but you gotta make sure that when you are uh, doing something across the center, instead of picking the generation curve as this curve, uh, what happens is if you do that, you're gonna get a span. So what you have to do is you actually have to pick this first and just make sure that the rail mode is at parallel. So if you do it like this, then you get a nice clean 
uh, surface with a single span on both sides. Now, if you want to, uh, if you want to establish a, uh, a natural mode rail, instead of using a rail, so if you just use a rail, then it's going to give you something like this. Right? If I put it to natural, well, first of all, you don't want a surface that's going like this. Uh, this is due to the, I guess, the aggressive curvature of this curve right here towards the end because we have acceleration going toward, towards the end of the surface. What you want to do is use a profile tool. So in, if you need to do this, uh, just choose natural and you can just click on this, accept, done, and pick the rail surface and build. And that's gonna give you a natural surface. Uh, it's very similar to a rail, except it's uh, it's got a single span. So that's another way to do it. But in this case, I think parallel mode is going to work very well for us. So I'm just gonna go back to parallel and one and one like this. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's bring the surfaces back. Now this corner, I might have to put another surface here. So that is to be determined. Okay, so let's pretty happy with that. And let's establish a little bit more surface. So I'm just gonna go down. Um, so right now in the side view, you'll see that there's a little bit of uh, section right here. So let me just check the image. Let me see if I can find the rear view. It looks like there's a little bit of shelf uh, right here. So I'm going to try to establish that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a rail. So from the side view, I'm just going to grab a, surf, uh, grab a curve like this. Change it to degree two for simplicity. And a little bit of crown because all surfaces have at least some crown, even if it's really, really small. I'm just going to move it up like this. Okay, and I'm going to be using rail. So because of this is going all, uh, this is again going through the center. So I'm just going to grab this rail curve as a generation and grab this curve as it's a rail curve. And now we have a nice surface now that's going through here, and it's got a single span, which is what I want. Okay, so it looks like that shelf is not on the image, the canvas, so I think I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so next up, I probably want to establish this surface right here. So same thing, I'm just going to grab a curve from here to here, like this, follow the canvas. I think that's pretty good, extend just a little bit. And again, uh, so I might have to check a few more images to make sure that what I'm doing is correct. So, okay, so it looks like on some of the photographs, it looks like that shelf disappears. It sort of tapers towards, uh, towards the end. So I think, So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna establish a surface first and when I have more details on the outer edges, maybe I'll add more surface then. Okay, so right now I'll just um, copy and paste. Actually, um, I'm gonna duplicate this edge. I'm going to, because right now I think we need a little bit taper towards the ends. Because if you look at this image right here, let me just zoom in. You'll see that there's a little bit of taper towards the end. So uh, there's a little bit of thickness here, but it's tapering towards the end. So I think I might use a new curve in order to establish the shelf. Okay, so let me just turn that off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move the pivot to here. Uh, I might have to do a little bit of adjustments towards the end, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna do a non-proportional scale like this. So to give it a little bit of taper towards the end, I think that's pretty good right there. I may have to do some adjustments, but uh, that's for later. Okay, so after that, I'm just gonna create a rail. So again, I'm gonna pick the rail curve first because it's going through the center and I'm just gonna pick that as a rail curve and here it is. Now it's not matching exactly, but that's okay because we probably have to do a lot of adjustments on the surface. So I'll leave that for now. 
Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, okay, so I think we'll just end it here and we'll continue on with the different parts of the car. Okay, so that's it for part seven. We will continue in the next tutorial. And thank you guys for watching.